In the spiritual life, there is a way of knowing one's own master. Here, the student, the seeker himself, has to play the role of a teacher. How? He has to give marks to the master. You know that there are quite a few spiritual masters all over the world. You will write down their names. Write down the names of ten spiritual masters. Then you repeat the name of the first master on the list seven times. You write him on your heart. Then you try to see what kind of feeling you get. If you feel an inner thrill, then you give him 60 or 70 percent. Then you repeat the next master's name. If you get no feeling from him, you give him zero. Then again, you meditate on somebody else, the next on the list. Repeat his name seven times. If you find you get a greater thrill than you got with the first one, then you give him 75% or 80%. You do this with all the spiritual masters on your list. Then the one who gets the highest mark from you is bound to be your master. This inner thrill that you feel is not false pleasure or anything of that sort. It is a real inner ecstasy that you are getting. The moment one hears the very name of the master or one sees the master, one immediately enters into the highest realm of bliss according to one's own capacity. This has been the experience of many of my students and disciples just after hearing my name. They have not seen me, but just by seeing my picture in the newspaper or by hearing someone mention my name to them on the telephone, they have felt an inner thrill from within. Now they have become my disciples. Again, there are many who come to me who are not meant for me, who have heard me talking at the universities or some other places, but who didn't feel anything in me. They are perfectly right in going to some other master who is destined to be their master. So in your case, if you are looking for a master, you kindly be the judge. You give them marks and see who deserves the highest marks from you. He who gets the highest mark is bound to be your master. This mark you will give according to your inner ecstasy. The seeker finds his guru on the strength of his inner feeling for his guru. When he finds his guru, his inner being will tell him, If this person does not give me even an iota of satisfaction during my whole life, I don't mind. I do not want anything from him. I only want to give him what I have and what I am. When a seeker sees a spiritual master and feels that he can make that commitment to the master, then he has found his guru. How can he say so? He can say so because he has seen hundreds and thousands of human beings on earth. The presence of those human beings has not elevated his consciousness. They have not given him immediate joy, spontaneous joy, inner joy, illumining, fulfilling joy. But the spiritual master who is meant for him will give him this kind of joy. There are quite a few masters. Each genuine master is bound to give joy to a sincere seeker. But again, There are degrees of joy. One spiritual master may give you an iota of joy. Another may give you abundant joy. A third may give you boundless joy. His very presence will give you boundless joy. He who gives you boundless joy is your master. That spiritual master need not speak to you and you also need not speak to him. His very presence is bound to inundate your inner existence with joy. Inwardly, you will be able to make a most soulful commitment to that spiritual master. Let thy will be done. I do not need anything from you. I shall not ask anything of you. I know for sure that you will do everything in and through me for my God-realization, God-revelation, and God manifestation. 
at God's choice hour. If a seeker can feel that kind of oneness with the spiritual master, then undoubtedly he is the real master for that seeker. If you have a master of your own, he is the best person to answer your questions. If you find it difficult, then you should ask him what to do. When you get a mantra from a master, or if you were initiated by a master, it is always best for you to speak to him. Your master knows what your soul needs. In the same way that a doctor knows what medicine he has given you, if you feel that this doctor cannot cure you, then naturally you can go to another doctor. Similarly, if you don't feel confidence in your master and you change masters, at that time the new one will be able to help you and guide you. But as long as you are under the guidance of one spiritual master, it is not advisable for another master to tell you what you should do. Here I can answer general questions such as what is the best time to meditate, but I cannot be involved in anybody else's method. It would be a terrible mistake because each master has a method of his own which is absolutely right for his disciples. It may or may not be applicable to you. At the same time, my method will be totally different from his. I am not saying that my method is the most effective, far from it, but my method is only for those who will eventually follow my path. Whoever becomes my disciple naturally feels something in me, and if I accept him as a disciple, naturally I see something in him. A disciple and a master make individual promises to each other. The disciple promises that he will follow the master's path devotedly and soulfully, and the master makes a solemn promise that he shall lead and guide the disciple to the destined goal. The disciple makes his promise only to the master, because for him right now the goal is the master. He cannot conceive of the ultimate goal, so he goes to an individual who has some peace, light and bliss. Gradually, as he approaches his master's consciousness, his only goal becomes the supreme. But the master, right from the beginning, makes his promise to the soul of the disciple and also to the Supreme. He promises that he will take this seeker to God. The acceptance of a disciple and the acceptance of a master are like mutual offerings. The disciple has tremendous aspiration. That is why he has come to the master. So he gives what he has, his aspiration, to the master. And the master, just because he is a master, has inner illumination. The master selflessly offers his illumination to the disciple. All those who already have masters are really lucky. I am truly proud of their inner awakening. There are many seekers who will not feel that this is their path. I wish to offer my deepest good wishes to them in finding their own masters. If I am not meant for them, I do not feel sorry. I only pray to the Supreme that they will get their masters as soon as possible, because there is a great difference between having a real spiritual master, a God-realized master, and following the spiritual life all by yourself. When you are alone, constant doubt, fear, and feelings of unworthiness may haunt you. But if you have a master, he will act as a source of inspiration, aspiration and faith for you. The spiritual master is not like a school teacher. A school teacher teaches you and then he examines you and passes or fails you according to your merit. But a real spiritual master is a private tutor. The spiritual master will help you and teach you what you need so that you will pass your inner examination. He will bring down constant compassion from the highest. It is with the compassion light of the highest that you can make the fastest progress. 
Whenever I accept a disciple, I consciously make a promise both to the disciple and to the Supreme that I will take responsibility for this person for eternity or until he has realized God. Until then, I am responsible for him. So when I make that commitment to the Supreme, the Highest, I have to be sincere and honor it. Some people come and accept a spiritual master, then after a few months or a few years, they leave him. Their own promise, however, is never ever over because they have made the highest commitment to the Supreme. Question. I am a student of another master and he has given me some guidance on a particular matter which is different to what you have said. Sri Chinmoy. I do not want to pronounce my judgment when it is a question of something your master has said. If you follow a path, you have to have implicit faith in what your master says. I am a master and I expect the same kind of implicit faith from my students. When a master says something, it is absolutely correct according to his understanding for his own followers and disciples just as what I say is absolutely correct for my followers and disciples. So I cannot pronounce any judgment. If you have a question which concerns your own aspiration, I will say what is best and what is not. But if you follow another master's path, you should have implicit faith in what he says. I have no right to encourage you to doubt him. If you do not follow his path, naturally, you have every right to suspect or doubt a master. There are some teachers who indulge in judging other masters' teachings, but I am not one of those. If he is a master, he has every right to offer his views because God is expressing himself through this particular master in a unique way. God is expressing himself not only through this master, but through each of us in a unique way. Question. How can we tell if we have met our master? Sri Chinmoy. I have answered this particular question millions of times. Now I am a spiritual master and today we have all come here to pray and meditate and create a spiritual atmosphere. When I called my disciples up to meditate, I saw that everyone else in the audience was meditating in his or her own way which is absolutely the right thing. Now each individual has to become a teacher and give marks for whatever he sees in me. Peace, light, bliss, or any spiritual quality, and also the spiritual atmosphere that he finds here. He should give 10 out of 100 or 20 out of 100 and so on. If he gives 0 out of 100, it may be absolutely correct according to him he will know it is his real master when he can give at least 80 out of 100. Also, it depends upon the seeker's own development and preparation. He must prepare himself to be ready for the master. Otherwise, if he is not ready, he can see the master face to face, but he won't recognize him. The master knows that that seeker is meant for his path, but he can't tell him, you are my disciple. The seeker will think, oh, I am so rich, or I am very influential. That is why he wants me to be his disciple. This is the way the master is suspected. Also, if the master says, no, you are not my disciple, then the seeker will feel, oh, it is because I have nothing to offer him. I am hopeless and helpless, and so on. Whatever the master says will be open to question. So it is the seeker who must choose, and then it is up to the master to accept him or else to tell him that there is another master waiting for him. He cannot tell him the name even of the other master, because perhaps the seeker is not ready.